I'm so excited about today's show. We're in Auckland, New Zealand, one of my favorite cities in the whole world. Come on. Auckland is routinely rated as one of the world's most livable cities. From the stunning harbour, to the iconic sky tower, to the exquisite art galleries and theatres, this city has something for everyone. Auckland is home to a buzzing multicultural food scene. Vineyards are speckled around the countryside to the north and the south of the metro area. Today, I'm meeting with Master Sommelier, Cameron Douglas, to find the best sips around Auckland and pair with tonight's food menu. The culinary team, Cameron and I, are planning a special wine and food dinner, highlighting New Zealand tonight in the Vintage Room. The Vintage Room customizes a wine pairing dinner just for you. A rare label of wine can elevate a dining experience into the sublime and our ship's wine cellars boast of more than 10,000 bottles with over 230 vintages. John, good to see you, my friend. I'm so excited to learn about New Zealand wines. With your personality and my good looks, it's gonna be a great dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Who would believe that out, right outside one of the main cities in New Zealand that you would find a vineyard as close to the city and as famous as this and in such pristine condition. So this place is called Kumu and the vineyard we're walking through is Kumu River and they are the premier producer of Chardonnay in New Zealand. Looking at these grapes, they just look happy. They seem to be clumped together real tight. And that's what you want. You've got happy grapes, you've got great wine, you've got great wine and food pairing potential. I want to open up my taste buds and imagine what we can make tonight. Does that sound yeah, good? There's no better way to bring together your ideas in the kitchen and these ideas in the vineyard than to taste the wine. This is Let's do our it. ideas, buddy. I Let's have several glasses of wine, <laughs> sing a few songs, <laughs> yes. then we'll go to karaoke. <laughs> When we talk about oak, it obviously doesn't come from the vine, it's these barrels. The seasoning of the barrel allows the characteristics of the wood and the interaction between the juice to form secondary flavours that then we taste in the glass. So it's a bit like sunbathing, you know, the more time you spend in the sun, the darker you're going to get. Well, this producer is looking for subtlety and elegance, mm. but just enough oak to give it the structure and the balance and the framework that shows off the fruit. Oh my. Let's do this again 10 more times. <laughs> This beautiful place is called Villa Maria and it's in a part of Auckland that's some, somewhat close to the airport called Mangari. As I look at these vines, they're completely different. Well spotted, John. They're these clearly younger vines. Yes. It doesn't mean they're not going to produce decent fruit. It's just that the condi conditions that they are growing and existing in control when they're going to bear fruit more control flavour profiles more. So no two vineyards are ever going to be the same because of the conditions that are here. The last vineyard we were at where you saw a lot older vines and they had big thick trunks that were clearly more mature in a different vine training system. These are a lot thinner, they look, at, they look spindly but they are actually really really good condition. I think this is the perfect hour for a good old slurp. Slurp is my middle name. <laughs> Cameron Slurp. Douglas. Mine's handsome. <laughs> Cheers, 
ciencia. Pretty good. Very good. Mm. <laughs> Promise me this gets to the table tonight. Uh, 100%. That's my pleasure. And I'm going to get some wines to have before we reach this pinnacle and a few wines to have afterwards. So we'll take, it's a food journey and a wine journey at the same time. Whilst you're doing that, I'm going to head back to ship. I've okay. got to get together with the chefs. I think it's great. Fabulous. See you later, mate. Let's do it. Done. 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 I'm heading back to the kitchen to chat with the culinary staff, Chef Werner and Chef David, to help plan this evening's meal. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm so excited that you're in the vintage room tonight as we pay tribute to New Zealand and its fine wines. It's my pleasure to be here and welcome you all as well. We're going to start with sparkling wine, Metho Traditionnel, something fantastic as an aperitif. Light, fragrant, uh, lots of mousse. For the first taste this evening, we're going to have a seared scallop crudo with a citrus vinaigrette. As you look on your plate, you'll notice that there's some thinly sliced scallop. There's a slight char on the outside. That flavor goes so well with the mandarin, the lemon, and a citrus froth. This is a fabulous way to open up your palate for the evening, bon appetit. Well, here we go with our first course. This is a wine called the Darling Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough in New Zealand. It's still lightweight, it still has all those tropical citrus characteristics that you're looking for in Sauvignon Blanc, but the texture is going to be a little bit different. That means that that seafood chalkiness and scallop and the seafood chalkiness in this wine are a perfect combination. For our next course, we're going to be having pheasant. As you look at the plate, some may say it almost looks like a beef wellington. You'll see the pheasant in the center, and that's wrapped with some spinach that's been blanched. And then finally, we made a light biscuit. As you look at the sauce, that's a cognac sauce. Finally, we had some fresh fava beans. Right, this next wine is a real treat for you, and this is all about texture. It's got a little bit of tension on the palate. It's got a weight and creaminess that goes with that velouté uh, textured sauce, a little bit of cognac. And this wine here, in terms of flavor, is white flesh fruit. So white flesh pear, white flesh apple. What could be better with a dish like this? We're going to move on to risotto. We are going to celebrate the Italian short grain rice. We gently cook the rice in some olive oil. Next, we're going to add some white wine and a stock. We gently and slowly cook the rice until it's ready, just about to serve. At that moment, to add a little bit more silkiness, a small amount of mascarpone cheese. This is topped off with some poached King Chilean crab legs. On top of that, a small amount of tarragon. And finally, we have a little bit of a citrus foam. Now you're in for a real treat with this. When you think about risotto, one of the classic matches with risotto is a Chardonnay, and this is what we've got here for you. But I think you'll agree when you try this dish that the counterbalance between oak the sweetness of oak, the flavor of vanilla, really does weave its way through the risotto and the acidity in this wine also, along with that sort of that peachy vanilla character that we have here from Chardonnay, will be a wonderful accompaniment. Anybody who knows New Zealand knows that they have some of the best lamb in the whole world. We're going to have a New Zealand loin ribeye. 
and that's going to be served with a broccoli puree. As you look down at your plate, you're going to see that we've taken some of the broccoli stalk and the florets and we've slowly poached them, made the puree and we've combed them across the plate. Next, we take the lamb and we slowly roast this lamb till it's cooked perfectly. We've taken the lamb bones and some beef bones and we've cooked them for about 15 hours to make this concentrated, beautiful sauce. I've got a fabulous wine for you. It's called Wooing Tree and it's a Pinot Noir grape variety. Pinot Noir is not without acidity either and you need a little bit of acidity just to contrast that, that richness of lamb, just the edge of that lamb. So a classic New Zealand dish with a classic New Zealand wine from Central Otago, Wooing Tree Pinot Noir. For our next course, we're going to have a ricotta strudel. It's one of my favorite courses. I love that we've shredded the phyllo pastry rather than just wrapping it. As you look at your plate, you will see this beautiful creamy center. You'll also notice some nice candied grapes. And then as you look at the drizzle, that is a truffle honey. This is a delicious cheese course to take you over towards dessert. Givert Stramina. It's Italian in origin from a town called Tramon. So there's going to be a kick of spice, a little bit of herbaceousness to this wine. Voluptuous, it's round, it's textured, probably heading towards one of the perfect matches of the evening. As we move towards the last course, we highlight the pavlova. We've slowly baked some whipped up egg whites and we've served this with some fresh mangoes and some mango puree. I've always found that wine and food are ageless companions. I want to say a special thank you to all the culinary team and Cameron for making this vintage room so special. Until next time, I'm John Ashton. Cheerio for now. Mm. I love New Zealand wines.